I'm Paul Seal from Codeshare.co.uk. Today I want to show you my starter kit called Clean Starter Kit. Now I released this last week and already it's had nearly 100 downloads which is quite good actually. I'm really happy about that. I've got some packages that have not even reached that. Um, so it seems to be proving quite popular which is good. And the main aim for this starter kit is so that people can install Umbraco 8 with a starter kit that looks good. So it advertises on Braco well. So um, if you want to install this, you can set up a new on Braco. If you go to umbraco.com and put in an email address in here, you can do a cloud trial, uh, which is free, and then you can install the package. If you don't, when you clean, when you install it, do clean slate, and then go to packages, and then choose it there. So that's a quick way to do it. You could also download it from here and install it. Anyway, this video, I just wanted to show you the starter kit, what's on the starter kit, and um, yeah, basically what comes with the starter kit. So first of all, we've got the home page. Then you've got this here, which is like the latest blog posts, ordered by date descending. And then you've got an about page. And this, I'll show you how you build up these pages. And then you have the blog section page, which has got more posts than just the top three. And then you've got a contact form. And in this, you can just type something in there. It will, it's got validation on it and everything like that. And you can click send. And then if there's an error, it will show you the content from in the back end where you want to display if there's an error. And in that, I just put some dev tips in the content and that this content comes with it so you can replace this content and just say oh sorry there was an error or whatever you so um it, we've got formatted code blocks as well so if you were thinking of knocking up a quick blog site you can um you know this could be a good start for you and you've already got code blocks you've seen that you can um put images within the content easily as well and then what else have we got so then there's a search as well so if i put in here about and click on that then we've got five where the word about appears so that is the items in the top navigation so then if we go into the articles what I decided for this starter kit was that when uh, someone's new to Umbraco which is what this is aimed at primarily it's people that are new to Umbraco and a good first look at Umbraco so if someone is new to Umbraco, how do they learn about the community and things like that? So it was community oriented, really. So I thought, well, what can I give people? So I wrote some blog posts um, or list posts, really, for good places to look. So this one here is one about popular blogs. So we've got Script on there, 24 Days in Umbraco, my blog, uh, johndjones.com. He does a lot of uh, tutorials. Um, we've got Stefan from HQ's blog, Owen, he does a lot of community stuff as well, and Mark, who I work with, and then Lee Kelleher as well from Umco. So that was just a, a list of uh, popular blogs. And then if we go back on here as well, we've got one for conferences as well. So every time someone is installing this starter kit, they get all this information every time. We've got about UDUF, Umbraco Spark, and and maybe if there were new ones that get added or created, I could add them onto the starter kit and release a new version of it. And maybe people could, if you want, if you're watching this and you've got one that you want to be included, you could send that on to me as well if you like. Umbraco UK Festival and everything. And look, it's got the YouTube video embedded in, showing that it's nicely formatted. And then what else have we got? It's got some more. Oh uh, yeah, meetups. So this is just some some of the meetups that are going on with some information about what the meetup is about and everything like that um, mainly on Braco meetups and community as well so just where can you go to connect with the Umbraco community as well as the meetups and the conferences uh, but you can go to the Our Umbraco forum um, you can look at the community section on Our Umbraco we've got the Slack group People didn't know about the Facebook group, but now they'll see it on the starter kit. Um, we've got Twitter and highfiveurock.com. So um, these are different places that you can interact with the Umbraco community. 
So let's have a look at the back end of this then. So we've got in the content section, what it comes with is a home node. Now some people don't like to do this. I didn't want to get too far into the whole conversation about should you start with a home node or should you start with a, a root node and then have the home off that and don't have any children under the home. You, I didn't want to get into all of that. Uh, I just wanted to keep it simple like the main starter kit is with Umbraco. So in the home node, um, there's one item which is settings really and that is the social links. So on this, um, I've done it so that you can put font awesome icons in there. So if we go to fontawesome.com and we and we search for an icon, say if you wanted to use this and you want to search for an icon yourself, you can click search for icons and then you could put, I don't know, uh, coffee and then enter. And the bit that you put in, so you can filter by free or pro and things like that. But the bit that you want is that there. FAS FA coffee now some there are some clever property editors that do all of that I wanted to keep it really easy so like with this one FAS FA coffee if you just put that in it will um, it will show on the front end so to show that we could look for I don't know plane or something like that let's see if there is one is there a plane yeah and I click on free as well right so plane so if I click on this and then I Look at that FAS FA plane, right? So I could change the coffee one to plane, and the FAS is important as well. So that I think that stands for solid or bold. So this is part of the solid style, so that's FAS, but there's brand, uh, so it's solid brand, and all different ones as well. So you just have to be aware of that when you're adding that. So that's been published on the site. So if we refresh the home page now or any page actually because it gets pulled through we'll see that that got updated so that's how you can update those and then you edit the links uh, using the built-in link picker um, we've got SEO wired up as well for um, meta name meta description and keywords some people don't think that keywords work anymore it's up to you if you want to do that or not it's there anyway if you do um, then we've got the blog section now you can put some content in using the grid editor so that content will show above the um, the list or you can leave it and just have it just being a list of, of articles which is probably what I would do and it, which is what I do on mine actually. Then you've got the individual blog posts so let's have a look at a blog post here let's have a look at the community one. So first of all we've got a header image and then we've got some content a big image with a caption and then some more content so let's have a look how that's made up on that one on the community post so you you pick the image we've got an article date as well that one's uh, got a red star next to it meaning that it is required so you choose the date of the article so that helps with the ordering of it as well and then you've got your author name I didn't do a picker for authors or anything like that I just wanted to keep this really simple for people to get started and then this is just a rich text editor item on a full width row and then I've got an image one with a caption as well and then I've got another full width row underneath um, with a rich text editor and it's as simple as that so just rich text editors and these links uh, these titles and links so if we look at that it's been formatted as h2 I can take that off and it goes back to like that or I can put it on so they're the formats that I added and then you can insert or edit the link by clicking on that and there we have it so that's how the posts are made up um, on the contact page I, I did tell you that you can edit the content that shows for success or error so on this look this is the content that I'm showing when there's an error and for a success so as I said before what you could actually do is just delete that if you don't want that dev tip on there anymore say you've installed the starter kit you've you've made the emails work and everything like that you're actually ready to put something live um, we can go back to the contact page and we can try and submit again and obviously this will fail because I've not set up those settings on this uh, site that I've just done but this time the error is just quite simple and we, oh yeah, we've got these options. So this is hide it from the navigation. This is hide it from the XML sitemap. And to, speaking of XML sitemaps, I have included an XML sitemap uh, template for you. 
So there is an item in there. If you go to the page, it renders out an XML sitemap for you. So you could submit this URL to Google and um, you know you've, it, you, this site is already coming with that for you. And then what else do we have? Um, we've got the search page and there's no real settings on the search. You just got the, the main image and title block. And that's about it really. Um, let's have a look at the media section. So it just comes with these 15 items already on there. So these 15 items get used around the site. So that's pretty straightforward. And then on the settings, uh, you can have a look at the partial views and templates and things like that. So I've got a folder for contact form and the result of that. And then I've got the I've got a clean grid. So this is me implementing Bootstrap for for the temp the theme that I used. And then you've got these others like the the footer partial and things like that. So if we go up to the templates, most of them are pretty simple and they just call out to different partials. So like with the main article one, it just calls out to the page header partial. I created a view model and then pulled the values from um, Models Builder to pass into that page header view model to make it consistent. Then I've got an article list. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's just calling the header and then it's calling the partial, which is latest articles. And then I've got contact, which has got some scripts referenced on it. I'm using the client dependency way of referencing the scripts so it all gets bundled and minified. And then a content item is pretty much the same as an article. And But it doesn't have, if you see here, it's got less things passed in to the header because it's not got an article date and things like that. And then we've got an error page as well. So you can point your 404 setting to be that page. And then we've got a home page template and the master layout as well. So even the master layout is quite clean and minimal. And then you've got the search as well. So the search is probably the longest page, but the search is really simple. It's just using Umbraco content query search. So um, I think that's about everything that I need to show you for this uh, starter kit. And so I hope you like it. Um, but if you do install it and, and it does work, please uh, report it as working on here. And also, if you if you like it, then, you know, please vote for it on here. I think I don't know if it helps or not, but it might help others uh, to l realize that it's something worth installing. Um, you can see the source code from it. If you click on this here, that will go off to um, the GitHub page for it. And in here you can see for the search, no, not the search, for the contact form to work, there's just a clean.core library where it's got the surface controller for the contact form. And also there's a couple of neat little helpers that I've put in there. Obviously the view model as well for contact and page header. And and the package actions for when I install the package. When it gets installed, it adds these media items so that it's consistent and you get the images. So that is it. Um, that's the clean starter kit uh, for Umbraco V8. So let's all get installing V8 and playing around with it and installing this starter kit and see what you think. And if you do install it, please let me know what you think. Uh, if you want to connect with me, I'm on Twitter as at CodeSharePaul. Um, if you if you like my stuff, you know, if it, and you want to say thanks or anything like that, feel free to uh, go to codeshare.co.uk slash coffee if you want to buy me a coffee. You're not obliged to. Um, I do all of this for free anyway, just because I love doing it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Click subscribe and comment, share, etc, etc. See you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.